This is the first in a series of videos on how to centralize your ServiceNow experience through AtBot. By incorporating out-of-the-box flow connectors with super smart services that AtBot offers, you can come close to automating all of your Tier 1 IT support processes right through AtBot, all with pretty simple AtBot skills. In this first video, we're going to cover how to create a new ticket in ServiceNow, one of the most popular IT service management tools out there. Following this video, we'll cover how to update or close a ticket, and following that, we'll bring in language understanding to automatically run through troubleshooting steps to further automate the IT support process. Before we get started, you're going to want to make sure you're using Microsoft Flow under an admin or service account with access to premium connectors. Likewise, use a service account to connect to ServiceNow so there are no permissions issues when running these AdBot skills. Lastly, we'll be connecting this skill to a custom branded AdBot, which requires either an AdBot Enterprise subscription or a free trial. A link to start a free 30-day trial can be found in the description below. This skill is relatively simple and starts with a user reporting a problem through AdBot. AdBot will ask what the issue is, the user responds, and AdBot will create a ticket using the provided input and respond back with the ticket number. To get started, let's jump right into Microsoft Flow. I'm going to create a new flow from blank. And I'm going to name this flow Create Service Now Incident. We're specifically using the word incident because that's the type of ticket that ServiceNow provides. I'm going to search for AdBot. And I'm going to use the when an intent is used flow connector. My trigger description is the description that the user sees when they see the help screen in AtBot. The trigger type, shared versus personal, is going to matter because it depends whether or not I can see it myself or somebody else. When I create new flows, I stick with personal. And the trigger is the term that the person uses to actually kick this off, so that is critically important. The next step I'm going to use is the get response from user. I'm going to ask the user what the problem is because at this point the user has kicked off an issue that they have and they have to report. And in reply activity, always place reply activity. That's the bread and butter of that bot. In the next step, I'm going to look up ServiceNow. Remember ServiceNow is a premium connector, so you do have to have a premium license uh, flow. This is the first time that I'm using my flow connector to ServiceNow. I need to name my connection, so I call it ServiceNow. My instance name is really just the domain you see in the URL that comes from ServiceNow. And then I use my username and password. I'm using a service account here because it helps to make sure that no matter who is requesting a new ticket, it's going to go through an account that will have the permissions to do so. The user does not have any sort of special add-on add permissions. They're only running this one step. It takes a second to get started. And then the record type, there are dozens of them. We're going to create an incident. That is the most common type of ticket that ServiceNow users take advantage of. And when I select that from the dropdown, I get literally dozens of fields here. But just to show just how many different fields. So from here, I'm going to take the input that the user provided and add that as the description. So I chose response text from AtBot. And that's all I need for right now. I'm going to place one more step in here, which is going to be reply to the user with the ticket number. So I'm going to use the AtBot send reply step. My reply text is going to be pre-written and it's going to supply the ticket number. The ticket number is considered a, a variable option off to the right. You'll see all of the ServiceNow fields are an option. And then of course I'm going to place reply activity into the reply activity field and that will complete the steps. Okay, I'm going to create this flow. And you'll see it in my list of my flows. These are per my personal flows currently. And then I'm going to jump into Microsoft Teams and I'm going to bring up AtBot. If I type help, AtBot provides a, a listing of all the different options that I have. Some of these are categorized. But under personal skills, because I have not made this shared yet, you see new ticket. So if I type in new ticket, AtBot will respond with the pre-written response that we've typed in earlier. I'm going to say here my phone hasn't been receiving emails. AtBot records this information, creates a ticket, provides me the ticket number, and you can see my ticket number ends in 295. I'm going to jump over to ServiceNow so you can actually see what it looks like. Under All Incidents, you'll see that the newest ticket is number 295. And if I open that up, 
you'll see that my description is directly input into that field. Now that is going through AtBot. Let's say I want to go through a branded version of AtBot. That's you know our internal IT team. We would change the first step so that our bot trigger type is not personal any longer, it's shared. That means other people in the organization have access to it. And if I jump to the AtBot admin portal, you'll see under skill management, that is there now. In fact, it was not there before until I changed the status. I added IT services, which is a category that we are currently using to track our IT stuff. I go under bot management, I look for our, our IT bot called Ask IT. Under that, you can see the categories that Ask IT provides is IT services. No other categories or, or skills that we have are available through IT bot, just, or through Ask IT, just these IT services. So I'm gonna type help, and Ask IT will provide a listing, including the new ticket under IT services. So anybody who has access to IT bot or Ask IT and has been given permissions to the category of IT services. We'll see this. So I'm gonna say my laptop ba my laptop's battery won't charge for some reason. And this is running the exact same flow, creating a brand new ticket. And you'll see that I'm using ticket number 300 this time. So if I jump back to service now, number 300 is the number one. This is a pretty simple starter skill. You can actually get a lot fancier with flow and service now. The most obvious option is to ask for more input from the user. A short description, category, and urgency level can help triage better, and Flow can get the user's name automatically using the, the Office 365 user connector and sending that straight over to ServiceNow directly. With information like a category, ServiceNow can be set up so only certain support specialists receive incidents categorized that way. Uh, for example, this is an easy way to provide help for both IT and facilities without having to use multiple bots. And lastly, we didn't include an error report in this skill. If it fails, the user is never going to know. Add a step or two to catch issues like connection failures and permission issues. You could even use Flow to review similar tickets opened by this user in the past that haven't been closed yet. So that's a basic introduction to how you can use AtBot as your single point of entry into ServiceNow thanks to Microsoft Flow. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great AtBot, Flow, and Lewis information. And feel free to comment if you have any questions. In our next video, we'll cover how to update and close a ServiceNow incident using AtBot. Thanks for watching.